you need to go to whoever's asking you for the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of bromine and ask them if their head is on straight, because it's pretty complicated. Here's what I mean. Bohr-Rutherford diagrams are normal, as in you fit two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, eight in the third, and two in the fourth, only until you get to calcium. After calcium, things kind of you have to go back and forth from one shell to another, as shown in this diagram. First shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell, back to the third, then you re-add more to the fourth. You'd go along, this is called the order of filling, which your teacher might have shown you with some kind of diagonal diagram like this one. But more importantly, bromine, according to the periodic table, has an average atomic mass of about 80. But there are no bromine atoms with a mass of 80. It's either 79 or 81. So you're going to get the number of neutrons wrong no matter what. Let's assume that this is supposed to be 79. 35 protons and 79 as the mass. The number of neutrons is 79 minus 35. That's 44. So that's 35 protons and 44 neutrons. The only options for bromine are 44 and 46. If your teacher asks for 45, tell them that doesn't exist. I mean, it might, but it's radioactive or something. It's because of isotopes. So first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell. That's all I'm going to need here, but that's all I want you to draw at the beginning anyways we'll add more if we need it. You know what I mean? Now again, the first 20 electrons, and we need 35, but the first 20 are filled as normal. Two in the first shell, up to eight in the second shell, up to eight in the third shell, and then you put two in the second, or fourth shell. That gives me my 20. This is currently isoelectronic with calcium, because we've got up to 20. But where do the next electrons go? According to this chart, the next 10 all go into the third shell. See, it's 10 wide. 10 electrons go into the third shell. The third shell actually holds 18 electrons. So let's add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons to the third shell. That's now 18 dots on the third shell here. And to get to bromine, we need one, two, three, four, five more in the four th in the fourth shell. The four P here is like one of the subshells, but what matters is the four. That's one, two, three, four, five extra electrons in the fourth shell. If you count them up, this should have thir uh, 35 dots total for 35 electrons. But what matters here in my book is that you have two in the first shell, eight in the second, 18 in the third, and I guess seven in the fourth. This is like the electron arrangement of bromine. The electron, the Bohr-Rutherford diagram is what you get when you put them all as dots. It's a beautiful thing, just like you are, my friends. Best of luck.